What's up guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. This video is going to cover the concept of quarantine, but more importantly, go over observation. I personally think that quarantine is very important. For those of you that are unfamiliar with what I'm talking about with quarantine, essentially every new addition that you bring into your system, you will first set it aside in a completely separate system from your main system. And the length of quarantine can depend. Sometimes people keep it in there for, for just a few days. Sometimes people keep it in there for over a month. But the idea behind quarantine is that you essentially handle all kinds of issues as far as like pests or disease in that separate system before introducing it into your main system. The benefit obviously is you can head off problems at the pass. Some people have incredibly elaborate full systems and the introduction of one frag that has one pest could be catastrophic. So in that sense, having a quarantine system that prevents just one issue is already paid for itself 10 times over, 100 times over in some cases. Now, one aspect of quarantine that gets often overlooked is that just by setting aside new arrivals into a completely separate system does not do anything, actually. The problematic pests and diseases are still on that coral. It can very easily kill that coral in quarantine. So the real benefit of quarantine is it gives you an opportunity for observation. I can pretty much tell you that observation is by far the most important skill you can develop as a reef hobbyist. Unfortunately, it is also the skill that takes by far the longest. And to this day, there are plenty of very experienced hobbyists that simply don't know what they're looking at. They don't know enough about the hobby to know that there's a problem. So for example, I'll, I'll use the example of this building, okay? I am a decent plumber. So when I was working with Jeremy, the, the really, really good professional plumber on this place, I know what questions to ask. I can see he's doing a great job. Everything works out great. My only problem with, with him is that I have a hard time scheduling him because he's that good. I know practically nothing about electrical. And so when the electricians are working on this place, I can stare over their shoulder the entire time and I don't know that it's a total clown fiesta in front of me. I just don't know what I'm looking at. I think that other more competent electricians or even general contractors or just people that dabble in electrical would be like, uh, they're screwing everything up. You need to fix all this before they seal up these walls. I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at. In the same way, oftentimes, there could be these problem areas in quarantine where these problems are staring an experienced hobbyist right in the face, but they just don't know what they're looking at. It's entirely possible that a real problematic pest gets through quarantine and into your show tank. It happens. I encourage people as much as possible, use the resources that you have. YouTube is a great one. There's plenty of videos talking about all kinds of really esoteric pests and diseases kind of get familiar with those things because sometimes it's, it's just when you start to see one of your corals going downhill, scour the internet for, for possible things that look like that and the cause. Once you've gone through a major problem like that, I guarantee the next time will not evade your detection. So should you still be quarantining? Of course, of course. Again, it just gives you an opportunity to observe the coral or fish if you're into that sort of thing, before you put it into your main display. The other thing about observation is that it doesn't end once the quarantine period is over. Personally, I find that whenever I'm looking at other people's aquariums or my own aquariums, I kind of don't get to sit back and appreciate it for how beautiful it is. 
My eyes are always scanning around for problems. I'm always looking for what's wrong in the tank. Sometimes it's just 1% of the corals in there have a problem. I fixate on the problems. So whenever I'm in walking around my greenhouse, it's never that good of a time for me because I'm always looking at, oh, that, that, that's kinda, that doesn't look quite right. That could be better. Those two things are fighting. That looks really fishy, I should dip that. Things like that, that's always going through my, through my mind. So the other part that makes observation a little bit tricky is that sometimes people physically can't even see what the problem is. Sometimes when I make these videos, I use these up-close macro lenses. And these corals that I'm shooting, oftentimes they're only an inch in size, but they take up a full 4K image. And at that point, you can see these little microscopic things going on that it's like, oh, I, I would not have seen this but for the fact that I shot this with a macro lens. Another thing is my full-time guy, Ben. He has a hard time seeing stuff up close. So he could never pick up on some of these small little critter issues anyway. It's just, he just can't see it well. I don't think he's alone in that regard. I think a lot of people don't have perfect vision. He knows what to look for. He's seen my videos and he's been doing it for decades. The problem is physically it's not happening. He can't see it. So I've come across a little thing that might help. On Amazon you can find dental loops. So the one in here is a fairly inexpensive unit. I think it's less than $50, at least at the time of this recording. Now, they make them all the way up to about $300, and I've handled them both. And I can pretty much say that the $300 ones are quite a bit better than the $50 ones. Imagine that something that's six times the price, it's probably gonna be a little bit better. This is what they look like. It's just like, uh, this particular unit, it's kind of just safety glasses with, take the little lens caps off, with some little magnifiers here. Now these things are designed to focus on something 12 inches away from your face, or thereabout. And this thing gives a 3.5x magnification, so if you're working on cleaning like zoanthid plugs or something like that, it really brings everything much closer. So in that sense, these are very, very helpful. If you don't habitually clean coral in that way, it's okay. The cheaper lenses are probably fine. Now, if you're a commercial operation like Tidal Gardens where there's people working on corals in detail all the time, that's when a $300 kit might be a little bit better. I do know that um, these are meant for dental surgery and the more expensive unit there's actual dentists that have gone to using those instead of these four to six thousand dollar custom ones that oftentimes dental students and, and dentists end up using. Quite a decent value, all things considered. And like I said, it just has to detect one problem one time, pays for itself. I will put affiliate links in the description below for both this cheap $50 one, as well as the $300 one. That pretty much does it, guys. This is a little bit of a short video, just kind of my take on the, the whole concept of quarantine, about the importance of observation. So in the comments below, let me know if you guys quarantine your new arrivals. Tell me about your setup and how long you keep those things for. All right, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, happy reefing.